Oh, it says my connection is weak. Hey, good people. What's happening? What's going on? Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. As usual, we are late. We we gonna do better, y'all. We got to get off the CP time. Why why your um you can't do it sideways like that because that's how it's gonna look on Facebook and that's upside down. All right, boo, calm down. You always do that. Um, so look. Yeah, Hello, how are you? Um, we got seven folks on over here. Hello, folks. Let us know that you're here. We're just gonna be with you briefly this evening talking couples communication for mm -hmm. dummies. <laughs> mm -hmm. Couples communication for dummies. And so, um, look, um, I just want to kind of open really quickly. And hey, 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 if you have any issues with communicating, communicating with your boo, with your spouse, um, I want you to raise your hand. Raise your hand by being like, hey, yeah, that's me. Um, but we wanted just, just to, first of all, normalize um, difficulties in communicating. Difficulties when you are communicating with Hey, hey, what's up, um, your baby? partner um, because it's a very normal thing to be on opposite ends um, of the spectrum to be in two different places and not know what in the world mm -hmm. your partner is saying hey, why don't you hold down front what you, you mean they do see both of us my arm is not that long so look we have two we have two you know situations going on right now mm -hmm. why does mine look like that anyway um, so, hey, Evie, Shantae, Laquan, Rhonda, Travis, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, and then I see Nikki, she, I'm telling you, sis, you always, you always did, what's going on, um, and Antoinette, so anyway, guys, we're not going to hold you long, I just want to say this, when it comes to communicating, Mm -hmm. There are some simple things that we often forget, that we often put away, that we do not recognize, we do not respect, um, and, and we really just, we just don't um, pay attention to and grow up in, in our skill set. And when I say skill set, I'm serious about that thing. Communicating is a skill set. And just because you know how to articulate doesn't mean you know how to communicate. Yeah, that's true. And I used to think that I could yeah, communicate. I thought because I know how to talk, I'm going to tell you exactly what I think and exactly what's going on, that that meant that I was communicating. But that doesn't mean that I'm communicating. Mm -hmm. So we want to give you um, two or three quick tips this evening. Um, oh, thank you. So I love y'all. <laughs> <laughs> love you too. Um, so look, I... <laughs> Why Chad say, I thought you were sitting next to DJ Jazzy Jeff. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So, look, here's number one. You want to give it to him? Number one? You like, you like how yeah. I did that? I just threw it I to know, him. I know. <laughs> hey, but check this out, y'all. I mean, you know, my wife, she set it up real cool. But, um, you know, I really just want to emphasize. Can you please stop doing that? Man? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just letting them see you. I mean, can you, like, back it up? Uh, yes. But, um, you know, I just wanted to highlight the fact. Come on, boo. <laughs> I don't be doing that with you. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, you know, so I really just wanted to highlight the fact that, you know, when it comes to, to communication, um, there's definitely some significant issues that definitely, um, come up in relationships that we see on a regular basis, not just when it comes to romantic I relationships, but my bad, when it comes to also family relationships and all different types of relationship dynamics. So one thing that I want to elevate is that I think a lot of people make the mistake that when they're engaging in communication, they get this whole distance thing all jacked up. You know, people have a tendency to communicate through floors. You know, you'll have the woman upstairs or the guy downstairs and you just shouting back and forth and trying to make a point, trying to get your message across. And the reality is that, I mean, there's really no significant or meaningful engagement that's taking place when there's a whole bunch of distance between you, unless you're being intentional about the words that you communicate. So the problem a lot of times is that oftentimes arguments and disagreements are happening between floors. And so what I advise many of you all to do is to really just decrease that distance um, especially if there's no safety concerns present, but decrease the distance so that an element of intimacy can be present where you can actually see the person's body language and really feel their energy when you all are processing difficult conversations and really trying to get to the heart of the matter. So that's one thing that I think is extremely important. And, and I want to say this, just to make this plain and give you an example, in, in our relationship, there was a dynamic where I was the pursuer and he was the runner. He was up out. You understand? If I had something serious I wanted to talk about, this Bama all of a sudden felt compelled and inspired. Why I got to be a Bama, though? Because I'm from the DMV, and that's what we say. <laughs> <laughs> um, we we started to look like twin sham. Let me find out. Um, but he, he would get compelled to, like, start walking around like, 
packing up stuff, cleaning up stuff. Mm. And and he would literally be moving from room to room, y'all. Moving from room to room. And I'm following after him, not realizing that I'm actually on the heels of this dude as I'm trying to make my point, trying to say whatever. And he's like listening and he's, you know, giving me some 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 comments here and there. And and, and so that energy that was created was energy of frustration. Mm -hmm. um, there, there was an energy that I felt like I was uh, trying to to um, to to basically woo him and, and get him to just stop and pay attention to me. Mm -hmm. And 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 without even realizing it, I got down with it. I mean, it just became the norm for us. It became yeah. how we communicated. He was moving and like, yeah, I'm doing this. Come with me over here. I've got to do this. Um, thank you for the love. You feeling that, ain't you? And. And I'm sitting up there trying to pursue. And so what we have to understand is that when the conversation is important, mm -hmm. when it's something that's important, doesn't got to be important to both people. Understand that. Y'all giving the love. Thank you. <laughs> um, but it has to be important um, for, one, for one of you. That's all that's required. Then we need to make sure that we just get still. And like my husband said, look at this distance thing. Yeah, get close to one that. another. Mm -hmm. And so what we often talk about is the fact that if you get knee to knee, Knee to mm -hmm. knee, y'all. You get two chairs. Mm -hmm. You sit down and your knees are touching. There is no way. There is no way. Can you do a little better with that? There is no way <laughs> that you're going to be able to really, really miss the other person because mm -hmm. you all are connecting. And more than the words that are being said, oftentimes it's the energy that we're sending to the other person. Mm -hmm. You may not get me and you may not be able to get exactly what I'm looking for in terms of the words I want to hear. But if your energy is right, then, we, we, then, we, then we're going somewhere. But you know what, though? A lot of times it's problematic when you do sit knee to knee. Mm -hmm. uh, we've actually done a number of workshops where couples are knee to knee. And the guy's rolling his eyes. The guy's not looking at his wife or the wife is not looking at her husband. And, um, you know, it's really not no significant engagement that's going on. So just because you're knee to knee, I don't want you all to assume that it's going to be all peaches and cream because the reality is that if you got some real serious stuff going on it don't get down like that i don't care how close you are <laughs> if you're not feeling your partner you ain't really trying to be all up on them like that but 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 um the other tip that we're lifting up is the importance of touch because even if you got significant issues mm -hmm. in a relationship just a simple touch can possibly diffuse yeah. whatever issues that you got wow. going on Thank you know it's you. been a number of times where you know my wife and i we've been in intense and heated disagreements and oh, you know, I like how you put that intense and heated disagreements <laughs> and so um you know in the midst of it sometimes just by um you know bridging that gap and getting a little bit closer and just touching her and letting her know that it's really not I'm really not necessarily trying to advance my point I'm more so trying to elevate the relationship and really what this is about is me understanding your position and your point of view because we oftentimes not to say that you do it all the time, baby, because I know I do it sometimes too, but we get defensive. You know, we get defensive when we feel the need to protect our position, our point of view. Mm -hmm. And so when you touch, when you let the other person know that, it's really not about me necessarily trying to get my agenda met. It's more so about me trying to understand and get to the heart of the matter. When you do something like that through the simple act of touching, again, you diffuse the situation. Mm -hmm. And so we will definitely demonstrate that. We, we'll do that next time because I don't... I don't feel like doing it right now. Is that okay to say that? <laughs> but sister, I hear you. I see you saying, yes, can you please demonstrate that? We will. We will demonstrate that. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. Tisha LaVon, girl, she talking about some hearts for me because I love you both to oh, life. We love you, too. And we love you, too. Tell Jermaine that's our sister. Yeah, tell Jermaine what's up. Mm -hmm. Um. So so that's number one. That's the that's the first piece in terms of the distance. Pay attention to it. It seems mm -hmm. real basic when you hear it, but you, you'll recognize, like, Dad, we do, like, be, I'm doing the laundry and he's, you know, clean, doing something in the closet and mm -hmm. we rapping and we ain't really connecting. So, so that's, that's a communication tip for dummies. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is because we can all be dummies. Mm -hmm. Um, because why do we think that we can actually get our point understood and we can actually make progress in the conversation if we don't turn to one another, mm -hmm. if we don't stop and look at one another, if we don't really consider what the other person is saying and we demonstrate that not only in our words, but in our movements and our nonverbal mm -hmm. in the energy that we give one another. So that's important. So, so point number, number two, two, number two. And I'm going to ask y'all a real question right here. You know, how many of you all have the tendency to go on your partner? What you, I mean, you just go. You, you just know, go. you just, you go just in. sometimes you got a foul mouth. You, you know, sometimes come out just all the wrong way. Mm -hmm. You speak in, inappropriately. You, you, um, you know, shouting, you yelling, you cussing at them. You, wow. I mean, you just going on them. I know we ain't the only ones. This one right here, 
Sometimes, yeah, sometimes you'll go. No, you did not. <laughs> yeah, I'm calling you out. Sometimes you'll just go. And so I know you're not I the only one. I haven't done that in a long time, sometimes though, right? You'll just, sometimes you'll just, sometimes you'll just go. Because what happens, y'all, Oh, that, remember not that long ago when well, I, yeah, it's, I it's, oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm lifting this up yeah, because. Yeah, but you got to know, you can't push the wrong buttons nah, now. Yeah, you can't push the wrong buttons, but the reality is that buttons will get pushed. Mm -hmm. But it's important for everybody, just through the art of communication, to learn how to manage when your buttons are being pushed. Um, your partner is going to push your buttons. I feel you, Laquan. She said, I'm not going to lie, that's me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, your partner is going to push your buttons. I mean, y'all in relationship to grow each other up. Mm -hmm. And so through the process of being in love and being committed, y'all got some things that rub up against each other the wrong way. So, I mean, to get into heated disagreements is very normal when it comes into a relationship. And But to be able to really work through those things and negotiate them, and actually come out on the better on the other side a whole lot better is really all what it's all about. Mm -hmm. It's all about being committed, being connected, and being intentional, even if somebody got a stank mouth. A lot of times what I have to do is give this one right here some <laughs> grace. <laughs> some grace, some understanding, because sometimes <laughs> things come out the wrong way. But see, let, let, let's not get it twisted though. Because sometimes just because it's not coming out, it don't mean that you're being stank, you're not being stank yourself. And so, and what I'm speaking about is really that passive. You talk about that passive. Has do passive anybody behavior. know about passive so aggressive behavior? So, so it's a this one of, right here. So yeah, so I mean, it, you it works. The, the prince of passive aggressiveness. So yeah, so it works both the passive ways. Passive aggressive prince. You don't want to be going on your partner by just being, you know, just real nasty and real foul. But you also want to make sure you're managing yourself <laughs> and not going on your partner by being passive aggressive. Mm -hmm. The intent is really to advance the relationship, not to really just being a contentious one where you're bucking all the time. So here's the thing. I just looked it up, y'all. I guess it was a few weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, um, and my son is asking a question. What's up? Go ahead. So about two or three weeks ago, I don't even remember what the issue was. I don't even remember what it that see ain't that something you can't even can't even remember. That tell you something right there, but I was hot. I gotta think about that thing. But I mean but I I felt myself in the midst of me kinda going in on my baby. Mm -hmm. Um, I felt myself I felt like I don't, and it don't happen that often, does it, boo? Mm -mm, no. Okay. Mm -mm. But I felt I like went to the other side like it's all off. I'm letting it all loose. I mean, I had a sense of the area. That's what it was. Yeah, I had a sense I, of the I, I, I didn't care. I was yeah. just letting it all hang out. And so, so one of the things that I know, you know, happened after that is I was able to kind of come back and kind of get in touch with what was going on for me. And, you know, it was a really, really, really sore area for me. I'm going to have to think about that. I meant to share that with y'all next time. We got little kids walking around, so I can't get all into it right now. Um, but, but. Um, it was really sensitive for me. And I, and at the end, you know, he was able to hold me. He was able to listen to me and say, I don't ever really, I don't want to do that to you. I don't want to make you feel that way. Mm -hmm. Now he wasn't responsible for me. He ain't responsible for me popping off, but I, I, I so appreciated him. I, I, I mean, me being able to be that vulnerable with him, for me to go like that. And then for him to come and be there for me, um, you know, after the fact, <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, but the thing that, that, that I want to lift up to you all, and we're going to end after this, and if you have any questions, go ahead and throw them out there right now, is that one of the things that you can do to avoid getting popped off on is you got to ask for permission. Mm -hmm. Do I have permission to give you some feedback? This is one of my favorite things to say. If I'm in the workplace and I got to say something to someone who is um, a, a staff member of mine, if I am working with someone in a volunteer situation, I don't care what it is, I ask for permission. Do I have permission to give you some feedback? Because see, when you do that, you give them an indicator that I'm getting ready to say something to you that might be a little unsettling. Because people say, oh, oh, well, yeah, sure. You know, they get a little like, oh, okay, well. And then there have been times when my husband does that, I do that to him, and he's like, no. <laughs> no, I, I don't want to hear right now. And I'm pissed off like, no, you didn't say no. <laughs> but, but he said, no, I'm not there. And if we just get into the habit of that, when we get into the habit of asking for permission, then now you have given your partner a heads up that I got some stuff I want to say to you, some stuff I want to share with you, but I'm going to honor and respect you and I'm going to ask for permission. And so when they even say no sometimes, they know and you should come back at it. Hey, I know the other day I asked you for permission to give you some feedback. Mm -hmm. can, I, can I get that? And now you are kind of working your way into it and you're, you're letting them know we're getting ready to go here, but this is, this is the way we do. Uh, we do it in a way where we uh, honor and consider one another as we go through this process of communicating. Mm -hmm. So if you get to do that, if you start doing that as a habit, y'all, 
it, you, you're not going to feel all like, oh, he said, do I have permission? You're going to get irritated sometimes when you hear that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know I don't. What you got to say now? But you will train yourselves in your relationship that when we need to go to a certain place and put some things on the table, then this is the way we do it. This is how we open the door. Mm-hmm. And so we have done that with one another um, for some time now. We're not perfect at it, but we have trained ourselves that, okay, here it is. So now I know I shift. We already have disciplined ourselves so that we can have the conversation in a way that really grows the relationship. It grows the connection. It grows the respect. It mm-hmm. grows the discipline. And it grows my, 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 you know, my big girl panties and his big boy draws. You understand? <laughs> so that we can get ready to um, hear something that maybe hurts our feelings a little bit, but we can handle it because we're built for it. Because mm-hmm. all people are built to be in a relationship with another person so that they can grow. See, so I see one of the questions over there that says, what if they say no? Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't want you to feel oh. like, so I mean, I've said that before. And so have I. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, 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 you know, when you say that, I kind of chuckle. I mean, I, I really just, I move on. So I'm not the type of person who necessarily like holds on to it. I just keep it moving. But if you say to me, can I, can I give you some feedback? And I say no. I say, okay. So... All right, honest, I, I see you're not, you know, you ain't really feeling that right now, but when can I come back to you on it? Mm-hmm. When can mm-hmm. I holler back, back at you? Mm-hmm. And, and that's what I do. Thank you for the love, sis. Mm-hmm. So, so you just have to ask, when can I come back? Now, here's the thing. We have to be patient in the process. Just because you ask a question don't mean you're going to get the answer. Yeah. It doesn't mean you're going to get the answer the way you want it or mm-hmm. even when you want it. And that's one of the things, because I'm... I need to keep. I need to know well, you don't want it now when you want it. Then can we come back tomorrow? Can we come back on Wednesday at five o'clock? When's it gonna happen? As long as I know it's happening, then I can back up off you for about forty-eight hours, right? So, <laughs> so twenty-four to forty-eight hours, we can pause <laughs> on it. But I'm gonna need to know when we're coming back, and that is not always the case. You know, sometimes he's just sitting with his feelings, and he ain't feeling that. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, you have to be patient with the process. You have to respect the process, but as long as you do your part, you ask for permission, and then they say no, and then you say, well, when can I come back at it? They don't give me no answer. Well, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. They might just give you, I don't know. Mm-hmm. So you then you then, then you got to respect that. You got to respect it. And you yeah. got to be able to pause for a minute and maybe come back 24 hours later, mm-hmm. but always seeking to really connect. Yeah. Always seeking... Uh, to find when is the right moment? Mm-hmm. What is the energy like? Where is he at right now? What is she doing right now? You understand? If you're really seeking to connect and you're really seeking to, ad- seeking to advance the communication, but you're not just hitting it over the head over and over again, mm-hmm. you know, it's just like a samurai. You know, mm-hmm. I don't even what know. You know I don't even know I mean, what a samurai on, is for real. <laughs> I think on the last one you spoke about, you spoke like, about like basketball, and I'm thinking to myself, like, shit, you don't even know nothing about I'm, basketball. Look, I'm taking some of my husband's analogies. It's like a samurai. <laughs> I don't even know what a samurai. I couldn't even tell you for real. I just know some type of martial arts, whatever. But I know they're skilled, right? So, so my 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 thought is this. <laughs> my thought is that they are always seeking to use their skill. They're always moving and flowing and paying attention to the wind, right? <laughs> What's going on right now, right? And then when they do that, <laughs> then they can make sure that they move forward with, with wise counsel in their ear being whispered by the breeze. So you need to do that in your relationship, okay? Do that in your relationship and make sure that you're really trying to advance the communication. All right, y'all, this has been good. Those are a couple of tips. We thank you for all the love. Yeah. keep watching <laughs> keep connecting with us you can always visit us at reallovehelp.com coming soon is blackloveandmarriage.com and we have lots of things that are going to be happening in the DMV um, coming up here um, in the uh, first quarter of 2017 so be on the lookout for that mm-hmm. and until next time y'all we love you we love you mm-hmm. stop playing and, and start, start pushing, pushing.